Good morning, and welcome to episode 93 of Talking to Artists. Um, we're going to be talking to Miriam Ibrahimi today. Um, so I, uh, if you've been following my Instagram, you know I haven't really been painting over the last little while. I have uh, did the Artist Project, then went to Chicago, which was super fun, um, and then went to uh, Vancouver Island, which was really great to see my sister and my, uh, my son. So that was wonderful. Unfortunately, I caught COVID somewhere along the line, so I will apologize if I'm a little bit um, coffee and stuff like that. I'm hoping that my, um, actually, maybe you guys can tell me. If I press this button, can you tell me if you can hear me? I'm trying to see if I can do a, <laughs> if I have a, a mute button here. Can you hear me now? Let me know if you can. If you can't, that's awesome. <laughs> anyway, I'm hoping that uh, that, that kind of worked. So, yes, thanks. I'm hoping to have a quick recovery as well. I've got so much to do, and I'm so disappointed that I'm uh, not going to be able to do the uh, Baby Studio Tour this weekend. Um, so Art Alchemy will be open. The other five artists will be there. My stuff will be there. So if you want to um, check out the, uh, the show, I advise you to still do that. It'll be really awesome. There's 22 artists in eight locations in the um, Bayview Leaside area. So that will be really great. Um, and my stuff will be there. And if you're interested, I guess you'll have to... Um, I don't know. <laughs> Call me. I'm not sure. I just, uh, I'm still contagious, so I can't unfortunately be there. All right. Well, I'm going to bring on uh, Miriam now. <clears throat> Where is she? Here she is. And hopefully that's going to work. Hello. Hi, Kate. How are you? Good, good yourself. Oh, I've been better, <laughs> but. Uh, oh, thanks, God. Yeah. 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 I thought you well, were going to cancel because, like, last time I got COVID and I had to cancel. That's right. I couldn't even sit on a chair. Like, I was very sick and I had all the symptoms. Do yeah. You, do you have, the, like, all the symptoms? or? Well, I'm feeling very foggy-headed, so I'm hoping it'll still be a good interview. You'll have to do most yeah. of the talking. Yeah. Um, and just, yeah, bad cough and headaches uh, and stuff. So, okay, yeah, my husband from, is home, too. Uh, he got it as well? Yeah, yeah, and my sister. It's crazy, you know, we've been doing so much, um, we've been so, so careful, and then we did the Artist Project, and then Chicago, mm -hmm. where a lot of people didn't wear masks, and I thought, mm -hmm. that's where I'm going to get it, and it ended up being kind of in the middle of the wilds of, you know, Vancouver mm -hmm. Island, <laughs> kayaking mm -hmm. in the middle of nowhere, but... Um, now you got it, you have the antivirus in your body, and you're good <laughs> for two months, right. at least. <laughs> Well, that's good because I've got another, um, well, after this weekend, I have another four shows coming up. So North Toronto, oh. Ottawa, and Riverdale. So, yeah, it's a drag. I was really looking forward to doing the Art Alchemy show just because it's the first time that all six of us will be there at the same time. Mm. But, <coughs> excuse me, but such is life. Yes, I guess I got away is. with it so far. Yeah, exactly. Like, hey, you got your everybody. haircut. It looks great. Thank you. I caught it on Saturday. <laughs> I was very overwhelmed with the amount of work and very busy in a studio. And I thought, I have no time for my hair. I went <laughs> there. My hairdresser wouldn't cut it that short. I said, short as much as possible. <laughs> Make it short as yeah. much as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, it's so oh, that's good. Yeah. My, wait, as mine gets longer, it just gets easier. So, of course, it doesn't look great, but it's... Uh, no, it, it looks it's amazing. Easy. Like, I like it. <laughs> I like the length of your hair. It's it's nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, now I'm having a. I feel like I'm having a hot flash with this COVID. Sorry, I got to put my hair up now. <laughs> now that I've been talking mm -hmm. about hair, drive me crazy. So anyway, yeah. let's talk about you. So yeah. you are a Canadian Iranian abstract painter yeah. mm -hmm. um, with an art degree from a uh, university in Tehran. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about your history and your <clears> background, <throat> and I would love to hear also how you're culture and your background kind of influences the work. Sure. Uh, I went to, I was born in Tehran and I went to high school for graphic design four years. And then I went to university for fine art painting. And very last year of the university, I was this close to quit. Uh, because like I thought from the studies and everything I thought like all the artists they've done whatever it was there they've been there and done that and what should I do this and right like I was questioning my 
work and my study a lot during the university, I was thinking like, since camera was born, camera was created and it could take a picture in few seconds. And what is the point of painting that camera can capture it in few seconds? And what is the point of taking a lot of time and do paint like nature or like, and even though you're such a great artist, but the nature is <coughs> much nicer than what you create. And then I, yeah. I thought of, um, with all the respect that I have for the landscape realism artists, but like I adore their work, but like I was thinking it's not me. I don't want to spend. So, so is there a, um, is there a tradition in, in uh, Tehran for certain types of, of art? Like is abstract, do people do abstract art or is that a little unusual oh, no. or do people follow no, yes. more I'm representational? Talking, you know what? I've been here for 23 years. Uh, I don't know a lot about uh, right now what's going on in art in Tehran and I'm not following any galleries or I, I have no idea. But back then, yes, it was like, the, but because you're in the program, you have to go through every steps. You have to learn about like traditional, all the um, style, you have to learn about it. But for me, like I didn't want to go through all this style. I, I, I thought now I'm here and I know what I want. I want to keep doing this since I was, like in high school, I learned a lot about like painting and art and I was taking a lot of classes, workshops and classes and I knew and I had the skills. But in university, I wanted to do only abstract because it's more creative. It gives you more option and it's unlimited. It's, it's unlimited amount of uh, work you can do versus yeah. uh, and so need. so was that was that not um was that not supported then in terms of you just doing abstract or did they still feel you had to do a little bit of everything to get a well-rounded uh, the, yeah, education the few are few uh, teachers that i had they were forcing you to do with what they had their style and then uh, thankfully on like third year I had a teacher who was educated in uh, US and he was very modern. <coughs> he was amazing. And from there, like I, I was very happy. I didn't want to leave his school. I was going to live there. And we did a lot of uh, like um, wall painting, like huge. And and starting from there, I was working on like simplifying the nature, like um, landscape and flowers. And I created so many pieces and I was very happy. And I did, again, I had lots of uh, thoughts and I was struggling. I was thinking, so what? So what? I'm doing this and what's going to happen? There are many well-known artists and what am I going to do? And, and then I was questioning myself and one of my teachers, he was amazing. He told me, you know what? Many well-known artists, they had this struggle and this question in their mind, like even Michelangelo was like, working like going to his studio and he had that thought that I'm not a great artist what am I doing and wasting my time and everything and he brought me some he told me about some artists well-known artists and he made me to finish the university <laughs> I was gonna leave everything and then I finished it and then uh, I was working in <coughs> in the, I was working in fashion industry. I was working for a company who was working with Europe. And I remember there was a magazine called Quelle, and it was covered in Europe, the fashion. And they had five pages 
on that mag in that magazine. And when I started working with them, uh, they brought some material that they couldn't think of using it. And I start putting the colors beside each other and uh, it turned out really great. And uh, three of their pages was the product that I designed for them and they offered me a very great deal to work with them, give me an office, give me an assistant to work with them. But I was very young and I said, no, I don't want to work in office. I just want to. <laughs> anyway, I had a lot of benefits from there. Actually, they were selling all those uh, uh, clothing and I was getting paid whenever they were selling the, they were selling the product. They were uh, giving me money, sending me money, but like, and I was teaching, I was teaching, I was working on and off for them. And then until I decided to come to Canada. And so how, how did you decide to do that? That seems like such a huge leap when it sounds like you had, things were really going well for you in, uh, exactly. in Tehran yeah. all of a sudden. So what was, was the like, impetus? Yeah, but like I was always like suffering from not having freedom and, uh, n not even for women, for in general, I, we didn't have, now it's worse, back then was a little bit better. Uh, there is no freedom. You can't do many stuff that it's just, it's very basic here. We don't, we didn't have that freedom. And of course, being an artist and you, I was, I had the job, side job, but if I was going to focus on painting, I wasn't sure if I could have a great future or support myself. And then, and from back of my mind, like I had this in back of my mind to move somewhere, like move from Iran. And then and my husband was in Tehran and we met and we dated for like uh, six, seven months. And then he came back, he was living here. And then uh, he came back and uh, we got married. He, we got married and he came back. And I came to Canada after 10 months. And then again, I was gonna paint and I thought, no, I'm gonna be so lonely. Because like, you know how is it? You have to yeah. you work, you have to be on your own. You can't be distracted by going out, seeing people, like having company. You have to be well focused on this. Like, it's funny. Well, and especially, especially if you're coming to a new country and you don't have family. a network of other people yet too, exactly. and family. And, yeah. yeah, I can see that would be really lonely. Yeah, I, I, that's what the reason I didn't continue when I came, I said, I'm going to be more lonely. I have no family, no friends, nobody. And then I'm going to start this. I have to be in the studio like eight to 10 hours a day. And then I feel depressed and miserable. And then, um, yeah, I start the, I thought I'm going to study in graphic design. And I was searching a little bit and I was working here and there. And then a few years after, two years after, I had my first kid and I thought, I'm going to have my family. And then I'm going to start, I'm going to start to see what am I going to do. And then, you know what, I always tell this, like, maybe it's not a great example, but like, it, it relates to me, or I, I think it relates, resonates to many other artists. When you start art, especially from early age, <coughs> or you have this desire in your heart, this is with you. It's like, I, I, I tell you, like maybe not great example, but it's like unwanted child. You put the child in orphanage, but it's like chain. It's always in your heart and, and it's pulling you. Yeah. toward her or him and and they, I didn't want to do this but like I, whatever I was doing I was back to the painting again 
and I was trying to take a little bit workshop or going somewhere, just get out of the house when the kids were laid up, get out of the house and use the studio space to do my work. And, and, and uh, I think it was 2010, 2009, I started again. And by 2011 and 12, I started like seriously. And 2012, I had this, uh, I had show, I sold few pieces, several pieces. And, and it was, um, I was very happy because like a stranger bought my pieces, not friends. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, That's a, and it's such a, it's such a different thing, isn't it? When a stranger exactly. who has no obligation to yeah. you buys your work. True. Yes. Yeah. Because like, I remember 2009 or 10, a uh, few friends bought my pieces and I was thinking, oh, maybe they want to support me and they want me to continue with this. And then mm -hmm. when the other show happened and a stranger came and bought my pieces and I was thinking, oh, maybe that's something, maybe I should continue. And then I continue from there and I'm happy. Yeah. Well, and, and the work is beautiful. And I, I definitely Thank can see so how you've got kind of that flow. And I loved mm -hmm. that. I think it's your Fly Me Away collection is about kind of love and family um, and isolation, I guess, obviously, uh, through COVID. You, yeah. And did that, did that, did doing that, that um, collection help you kind of work through some of those, those issues and challenges with isolation? You know what happened there? Uh, uh, those little birds actually uh, born in my painting uh, like late 2019 when I was preparing for the show in Paris, remember? And yeah, our capital. Yeah. Yes. <coughs> that happened. Those little birds happened back then. And then I was thinking, I love the texture and uh, mm, those little elements i i loved it and during pandemic like i was spending like like i was only was going upstairs to either make a little food or eat something and i was spending most of my time here and and i was i do a lot of thinking i like there is a chair over there i sit on that chair and I look on my painting, I critique my painting a lot and I do a lot of thinking. And <clears throat> those like brush strokes and feathers and like birds, it just happened and it was probably the desire that I had or maybe like missing, like I was missing. <coughs> socializing with people, seeing family and friends. And it just happened in the painting with no intention. And as right. I, yeah, as I'm, I told you that I do a lot of thinking and I was looking at this and I thought, oh my God, this describes exactly what I feel. These birds are looking to go see friends and family. And then yeah, and there's free. no place, in, exactly. And there's no place for them to saddle down and they transform to feathers, trying to find a place to sit or to land. And, yeah. and some of the brush stroke, it's exactly like the very first letter of Farsi alphabet. And some dots are like, like those Persian dots, Persian dots, and I have the background in uh, Persian calligraphy. I went to a school. Oh, cool. Uh, yes, uh, I went to a school for three years for Persian calligraphy, and I had degree on that. And it shows on my work. And it's funny, many people that they knew that I have Persian calligraphy <laughs> background, <coughs> they asked Sorry. me, no, that's okay. I feel so <clears throat> bad because I've been through. I know how bad it is. You're awesome <laughs> to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, people who knew me, like who, who knows me and they know that I have the background, they asked me to uh, bring some uh, Persian calligraphy inside the work 
but that could be very personal. I didn't do that. I thought I'm just going to limit my work. I want my work to be unlimited, to reach to unlimited people and culture. Um, I didn't want to limit it to only one, like one culture. You know what I mean? But it, but it is, but it is kind of, it's kind of neat though to have, um, have something that is, you know, Persian and is your background within these pieces and presumably um, people who are Persian who see them see that, but it doesn't take away from it if you don't know that. If you're not right. Persian and you don't recognize those mm -hmm. symbols, um, you know, it's still, they're still strong pieces. And I think you still mm -hmm. get the feeling of the energy and the movement mm -hmm. without having that kind of maybe deeper background. Right. That's true. You know what? My color combination is very like the gold and those bold um, the blues yeah. blues and turquoise they all are coming from my background like the turquoise like my mom had the necklace was turquoise and gold she was always wearing that and her ring was turquoise and gold she always had it it was part of her and I loved it and this color is just like it's so hard for me, actually, when I want to do another color combination, I feel like I don't know. I have to start from the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's is... funny how you, it's funny how you have your own internal color palette though, that you just mm -hmm. love to do. And although I'm, I'm the same way. And although I do find it sort of, it's fun and interesting to try something completely different. It's, mm -hmm. it feels a little bit foreign. Like you kind of, you can't the flow. It takes a while to get into the flow of it. Exactly. Yes. And it's, uh, I have a collector friend, she adores my work and she has several of my pieces and she was asking me to do green. <laughs> Sometimes she calls me when I have posts on Instagram, she, she calls me and she says, yeah. oh, I love that piece, this is great. And like one day, I remember, when was it last year? Two years ago, she called me and she said, you need to do green, dark <laughs> green, light green and gold. And that's why I did that. She asked me few, two years ago, and then I did one last year, which was sold. And I did another one. And it's funny. I love it. I love the green, and it turned out really nice. I love the uh, <coughs> color. Uh, uh, I had a client last month. She came to a studio. It's funny. She was watching my work for six years. Six wow. years. And then right after artist project, like few days after artist project, she uh, emailed me to have a big piece, like 48 by, that's the canvas I purchased, it's there. Oh, nice. Yeah, 48 by. That's going to be fun. Oh, yes. And guess what? She asked. Wow. She asked for green. She came. <laughs> the painting that they saw, it was like my, it was healing power. It was like um, purple and yellow, like all shade of yellows and purple. And they loved that. But I thought if it's going to be like purple, all those purple and yellow, it might be like, it might too much. be too much. Because it's yeah. a big piece and they are going, like when they come in, enter the house, they will see it the first thing and they can see it from everywhere. I thought maybe purple is too much. And she said, green? I'm going to do two paintings. I'm going to do green and I'm going to do this color combination. This one. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. This one Blues. is, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, my uh, color palette, like my, actually, <coughs> I have my signature color palette is like that yellow ochre and gold and a little bit brown and I love that too. And I think yeah. that's very cultural as well. Like, I was going to say, I think, yeah. I think it must be because I find mm -hmm. I love yellows and golds. I find mm -hmm. they're hard. They're hard to sell. Mm -hmm. I mean, people, I think, are often afraid of yellows. It's such a strong color. 
but obviously within your culture that it means something different and so there must be a different um, appreciation for it yeah it's it's hard to sell but the person who wants the piece who wants this color combination they love it they love it yeah i would agree yeah. And so you tend to work with a fairly minimal color palette. Like, I think it's interesting. You work with a lot of complementary colors, like the purple and the uh, yellow, yellow, but it's still fairly minimal um, with lots of layers and lots of colors mm -hmm. within that palette. But mm -hmm. what's your thought process on that? <coughs> um, I like to, uh, I actually have some pieces, like um, I have several pieces with uh, multiple colors, but like, I don't know when I started, I started with limited color palette because I never want, I thought, okay, the whole world is busy, like the, our whole life is busy, busy, busy. And when you have a piece in your house, you want to have a calm piece. You come home after a busy day, you want to look at something which is calm and less stressful, less busy and let and calming yeah. this was my idea of and i was always thinking like i remember when i was uh, when i bought my first house and i wanted to have a painting in my house and um, i couldn't help myself buying a print from a store and i thought it's a shame that i have eight years of art education and then I go buy print <laughs> and original painting it was very expensive I couldn't afford and I I thought to myself I'm gonna do something and I was always thinking something very simple like landscape like water or sea sea like very simple and the idea started from there I did a very big piece just the um, landscape, just the um, seascape, very simple. And the idea came from there. I thought I can do this with like very limited color palette, but of course I have to build the texture and layers and layers to give depth to it. Right. Because when you have limited color palette, it's, it's hard to give depth. But when and you do you create, work in, are you in oils or acrylics? acrylic so you kind of let layers dry and then kind of continue to work on top of them or how does that work for you yeah we, uh, i always have several pieces uh, on the go and i work i just work on some piece and i leave it to dry and i don't want to dry it with blue dry or i just want to i want it to dry on its own and then i go back again yeah, I have, I do that. Like I have several pieces at the same time. Like now, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm working on six pieces. Right. Well, that's and cool. I have, yes, I, and the good thing is I have a space. I go, like I put the painting there to dry and then I go back there, I paint there, I have on the wall, I paint something on the wall, I have the table here, yeah. I'll put it here. Yeah, that's how I do. You have a huge studio, it's like, it's really awesome. <laughs> Thank you, but as you know, it doesn't matter how huge your studio, you run out of this space. I know, it's, a, it's incredible. Yeah. yeah, I've got to go late tonight because I moved a bunch of my panels into my studio and I've got to mm -hmm. tidy it up for the Bayview show, even though I won't be there. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just, it's claustrophobic. I don't know where I'm going to put everything. It's just too much yeah, crap. <laughs> exactly. And it's a huge studio that you have. It's lovely. It's, yeah, it's a good size, but you're it's right. A, I think it's, I, I always are... say it's like a purse, you know, like it doesn't matter how big my purse is. It's always full. <laughs> That's so true. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I, I have a great storage there. Like now my husband is working on fr making frame for me, which is his least favorite <laughs> job. <laughs> and yeah, now he got, yeah, he got some space there. Like almost a quarter of my space is gone for the storage and for the frames. Yeah. But it's, well, it's I, nice to be able to have everything in one place. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Okay. Shoo. Sorry. You. No. We, so, we um, can go. We can go whenever. Like, 
I don't want you to just, I know how bad it is because I had this. No, I, I, I just feel badly because I'm just like, <laughs> no. I feel my brain is really foggy. You know, so, I always admire you. You're so strong. You're such a good role model for all the artists with all the energy. <laughs> I, oh my God, I can't. You make me tired sometimes with all the shows and everything. I couldn't well, believe you it. Know, right after Artist Project, Tuesday, you moved. You packed your car yeah. and you moved to <laughs> Chicago. Chicago. Well, that was that was not totally planned because, you know, with COVID, they moved all these shows, right? So same thing in June. I've got an art show every weekend in June. Wow. But then I got the summer off, so that'll be nice. Oh, that's good. But, yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of weird though, I find. Do you find that getting back into this, into the role of kind of doing these shows and having to pack stuff up? And oh, yeah. I feel like I'm just so out of practice. <laughs> um, me too. It was so hard to focus. First of all, with the uh, COVID, I <coughs> found out I couldn't focus well. Yeah. My brain was foggy, like a fuzzy, and I couldn't focus. It, it was so hard to focus after COVID. And then we didn't have any like serious show for about like two and a half years, two years. And then yeah. it was so hard, artist project. I, I was so anxious. I had anxiety, but it went well. Yeah. It was fun. I mean, it was really fun to get back into it. But I do think that, um, you know, it just, it takes a while for your body to get used to that level exactly. of energy. Your brain yeah. and. Yeah. Yeah. True. So what's on, what's next for you then? What are you working on now? Or what's the, uh, what's in the plans? The plans are, uh, I've got accepted in Art Finder in oh, cool. Los Angeles. That's fabulous. In October. I'm That's, gonna that'd be that. fun. Yes, I have to prepare and for that. Is that Go an in-person show? Yes, it is. Oh, hopefully, nice. hopefully it's gonna stay in person with the COVID <coughs> situation because if, like in China and Korea, they got Corona back. I know. Hopefully, it stays in person. Yeah. Well, that would be good. That would be a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm doing yeah. San Diego in September. Fingers crossed. Yes, hopefully it yeah, goes. Hoping like, to make that work. Yeah. It's great. I love to do San Diego, but like it's a lot of work. I, I uh, LA is easier for me because I have family there. They can help me. Right. That's why I chose to do Los Angeles show. Well, that sounds great. Yeah, but like I don't know the market there. I don't really know. They said it's a great show. Yeah, I know. It's always important to, um, I think, do a bit of research on the market mm -hmm. and the color palettes and stuff like that when you're doing a new city, I think. True. And the thing, yeah. I, I thought I'm just going to roll my painting and send it there. And I go there a week earlier and I stretch the work, re stretch the work and to just have less expense. Yeah. Yeah, because I guess you can't really drive. <laughs> Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. And I I was supposed to go to Chateau, that artist residency, on May, oh, yeah. 20, May 2020. And then I had to cancel it. And, right. then, and then they had another opening in, uh, when was it? Just September? September 21? I think September 21, but I didn't do it. I, I, I was afraid to travel. Yeah. I'm going to do yes. that as well. I don't know well. I'm in. The, <laughs> Just I'm, have to book your time. Yes, fall 2023. They said they said you can come fall 2023. But like I didn't send the money or I didn't book it yet, but I left to do that. Yeah, Helen and I are doing it in uh, spring of 2023. Oh, you pay? So we also, for, yeah, yeah. Because I thought, you know, if I don't, if I don't pay for it, it's I'm going to keep exactly. thinking about it and talking I about know. it, and not doing it. And I think that if it's if there's COVID and we can't go, they seem to be pretty good about working 
kind of working around that. So but I think that's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to that. If, oh, if yeah. Everything yeah. goes well. <laughs> Hopefully. We really yeah. need those type of uh, things. Yeah. I think so, too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'm going to probably um, yeah, shut yeah. off there a little bit early because yeah. I'm kind sure. of oh, yeah. brain dead a little bit. I but do. um yeah. <laughs> it's been really wonderful uh, chatting with you and connecting with you. And I know we've done a number of shows Same together, here. but it was yeah. the first time I got to hear about your history. And uh, mm -hmm. that was really fascinating. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So have Thank a good you. show. And I guess, where will we see you next? What next show are you doing next? Uh, Any outdoor shows? Art Pocket Square. Yep. Art oh, yeah. Okay. That, in Square. September. Yes. Art Pocket Square. I actually apply for Rosedale Art, Art Fair. Yep. But... I might not do that because it's so busy. I'm very busy and I have visitor coming from Australia and oh, nice. I'm going to yes, I'm going to be uh, she's actually she, we were at the same university for years. We were together for years and we had the friendship oh, awesome. after them. Yeah, she's coming here. And Art Park in the Square is my with uh, artist network. Yep, so I will see you there. Yeah, sure. Thank you very much for inviting <laughs> okay. me. And thank well, and thank you, you so much yeah. for coming. Oh, my pleasure. And we will talk to you later. Sure, bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks, bye-bye. Bye. And next week we've got uh, Stephanie McLean, and so she's actually the beginning of a group of seven artists who are all working together on one collaborative piece, so I'm super excited to uh, hear what she's doing as well. And um, if you missed any back episodes, we missed some of this one, uh, it will be on my Instagram.